about that. Sweet Tooth, a series on Netflix, is a fantastic show to explore how animal hierarchies are used in popular media films. Infected figures are abundant in apocalyptic films that explore contagion and tensions between science and nature. Diseases jump from animals who are eaten, such as in Contagion, or are tested on, such as in Resident Evil or 28 Days Later. Not only are animals represented as vectors of disease, but as humans become infected, they often become less human and more animal-like. Humans lose their capacity to speak, they cannibalize, and sometimes they even run on all fours. These films have an implicit animal hierarchy. The closer to human a character is, the more worth and value their lives have. We're at the breaking point. People are living in fear. We see this in Sweet Tooth too. Set a decade after The Great Crumble, many humans have died because of the H5 G9 virus. Other humans are giving birth to hybrids, these human-animal forms, and the show depicts humans as problematic, but they remain the baseline against which hybrids are compared. This is clear when we realize that the main hybrids in the show, Gus and Wendy, are more human-like in characteristics than any of the other hybrids in the show. Everyone is surprised they can speak. Leave me alone! Shit. Speak. Stay back. You talk. The importance of this becomes apparent when Addy, the resident tortured doctor, finds himself unable to do an invasive scientific experiment on Gus. What I'm about to do goes against everything that I believe in. But I'm doing it for her. Gus is just too human-like, too high up the hierarchy for the doctor to experiment on without completely undermining his ethics. So he opts instead to test on a chameleon-human hybrid that is more animal-like. But understanding the animal hierarchy does not end there. Animals are hidden in the narrative of Sweet Tooth 2. We see chickens tested on in labs, tigers tied in containers, teenagers wearing fur, and humans eating meat. These animals are at the bottom of the animal hierarchy, and are often only used as plot fillers and little else in these kinds of shows. The only animal who is given any sort of considered attention in the show is Trixie, Dr. Addy's horse. Trixie is used for transportation and she is implicated in the death of a neighbor and eventually she is let free as an allegory for questioning who humans are. While Sweet Tooth's reliance on hybrids upsets the divide between humans and animals, the show unsuccessfully captures the significance of animals in its narrative. In general, animals are given less attention, screen time, or agency than humans and the other figures in contagion-related films. Whether it be chimpanzees or chickens that are tested on, dogs who are caged, or deer who are hunted, animals often only serve as background noise or plot points in these films. One exception is Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs, which represents how dogs are caught up with zoonotic transmissions and urban politics. Unlike most films, in Isle of Dogs we realise that if animals are kept as pets or tested on, they tend to have different relationships to the spread of disease. We also see how animals are impacted differently by diseases too. They can die, be relocated and be saved. I don't think I can stomach any more of this garbage. Exactly. Same here. Words out of my mouth. Many zombie, alien, superhero or contagion based films have these animalised hierarchies. Some, humans are the norm, infected others are the problem, and animals are often invisible. It is important to remember that while humans often remain the norm, which humans are considered to be, in quotes, the ideal type, in these films is often shaped by racialized and gendered hierarchies too. Have you ever thought about animal hierarchies before? Why are they so common in popular media, and how do these figures help us to explore human anxieties and ethical questions about animals? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Good boy.